What's up guys, how you doing? Welcome to another video. So today, quite excited about this one because this is all about checking how well our camera gear is performing. Quite an important one for us, right? We want to make sure that things like our autofocus with different lenses that we use on our cameras is up to par, calibrated correctly to make sure that we're getting sharp images. Now there is a piece of software out there that a lot of you guys might have heard of called Focal, and it's by Riken Technologies. It's a piece of software I was aware of, I'd heard of it before, but I'd never really looked at it. And actually quite a few of my viewers commented and sent me messages saying that I should check it out. In particular, a friend of mine, Pascal, from our Facebook group. If you want to find out about the Facebook group, go and follow the Patreon link in the description. It tells you all about it there. Pascal said that he'd used it and he'd got some good results. So I was really interested to try it out. And that is exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to run through the whole process with Focal. We're going to see how the calibration works. Going to test it on one of my cameras and my lenses and see what we think of the results. Probably should jump in at this point and say this video is not sponsored by Riken Technologies, not sponsored by Focal. I did, however, get in touch with them, told them what I wanted to do. And so they very kindly sent that over to me for free for me to try out. Not a sponsored video, but I didn't actually buy the software. Probably important that I let you guys know that. So we're not going to go through every tiny technical aspect of the process in this video because that might be an hour long <laughs> real time video. Instead I'm going to show you kind of the setup, how it works and most importantly we're probably going to focus on the results. A few little bits that you need for the setup. Of course you're going to need your camera and lens that you want to test and for this today we are testing my 1DX paired with my Canon 70-200. to Just for absolute clarity this is the f2.8 IS Mark 1 lens. Now my very first initial observation of this software is that it's really easy to set up. It gives you a quick guide that you can go through and it tells you exactly what you need to set it up. It tells you how to do it before you actually start so that you feel really confident you are set and ready to go. The few key things that it tells you you're going to need. Of course your camera and lens. You're going to need a sturdy tripod. I have one of those right here in the background so we are good to go. We're going to need a tethering cable to tether my camera to my computer, which I already have fortunately enough. And we need to print off the target that they give you with the software. You just print this off on a piece of A4. This is the Focal target that we're going to be calibrating our lens with. Something else that's really cool within the startup guide is it shows you the distance away that you want to be from your camera to get this test to work efficiently. Now at 200 mil with my lens, it's gonna be 18 feet. Recommend doing it indoors so that there is no weather interference or wind that could possibly move your target. However, I don't really have a straight 18 foot stretch of space in my house. So we are actually doing it outside. Well, we're kind of doing it half outside because we're gonna do it from here in the conservatory Conservatory out the door to the fence across the garden which is about 20 feet away. I've picked today because it's a bright day but with no sun really so it's nice even light and there's no wind at all so we shouldn't really have any interference with the target even just in case I'm going to pin it down quite efficiently to make sure. Slightly different video for you guys today because we're going to be up and walking around and going to show you this process. We're not just going to sit here and chat. So look, let's go get this set up and then we will get into the software itself. Let's go. Okay, so for the setup itself, the first thing we're going to need is the camera set on the tripod, which we've done. Got it balanced really nice and tight and it is tethered to the computer over here. So we are actually doing this on my desktop. Not for any particular reason, just that my desktop is right next to where I need to do it. So I didn't need to worry about doing it on my laptop to make it more mobile. Okay, then the next thing I need to do is make sure that it is tethered from there, directly facing towards the target over there. Made sure the target is really nice and secure. Look at that. We have used these awesome duck pins. You can't go wrong with duck pins. Got that really secured well to the fence. So there'll be no movement from that if we do get a kind of little tuple of breezes. And we are positioned about 20 foot away from our camera, which is in there. Okay, so at this stage, we basically are going into the program itself. We've opened it up uh, on the computer. I've done all that physical setup stuff. Now we go into the program and we actually go through. So I've done a bit of screen recording and I'll show you guys how it works. Let's get stuck into it and see what results we get. Let's have a look. Just gonna go through, this is really great, right? It gives you all the real good setup details. So USB we've done, 
um, sturdy tripod, focal target all set up. Bom, 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 bom. Here we go. Uh, the right distances. So to start with, we're testing this at 200 mil. We're going to do it at 70 mil as well, but 200 mil, 5.5 uh, meters or 18 feet. And mine is actually about 20 foot away. So I think that should be good. Remind you to make sure we've got good light, which I've done as we go through. And the other thing it says we need to do is to make sure that we have got the target set up with the center of our autofocus points. Now I have done exactly that. So I'm comfortable that is all set up correctly. Now this is interesting. The next thing it says to do is to make sure that the eyepiece is covered. Now actually the 1DX comes with a switch where you can just close the eyepiece, which makes this really easy. But if you don't have that, you'll need to be able to cover it yourself like they've done with the example here. It says we need to make sure the camera is set to AV mode or aperture priority and set to one shot. And that if you've got Im image stabilization, that it's turned off and I've done all those things. So basically we are ready to fire up Focal, which I've done right here. So first thing it says, um, a bit of info up here, I won't bore you with all that right now. Camera, let Focal take control of your camera. That's what we want to do. Which camera do we want? The 1DX? Let's try connecting to that and see what happens. Okay, we are connected. And that's interesting. Up here on the right, look, it tells us actually which lens we've got connected to it as well, which is cool. So set up, it reminds you to do the different bits, which we've done. Yep, we're all good. Target set up, check your camera and environment is ready for testing. Oh, wow, that's cool. It actually shows us the target on the screen, which says it's just a little bit off. So some of the checks could not be tested. The lens settings, oh, this just came up uh, because it said that I had um, aperture uh, range settings enabled, which I do, but it doesn't limit until you get to, um, to an aperture of like 32. So I'm not worried about that interfering with the test. It's happy with the target placement, the distance, the focal length, lighting, everything else is good. So fine, we can stop that for now, come out of there. Okay, calibration check, let's do this. It's really interesting. So it's, um, I can hear the camera clicking in and out and the shutters clicking. So it's doing a whole load of stuff. It's really interesting actually. It's really kind of taking control of the camera and it is analyzing all sorts of different information. It's showing us the live view on the side. Those both look pretty out of focus. So it'd be interesting to see what it, what it says here. It's really interesting. So it's now come up saying your autofocus system is not performing as well as it could. Calibration is recommended, which fine. That's the whole point of why we're doing this, right? So that's really interesting. That's interesting. The further into this test we get, the more it is saying that the autofocus is actually performing poorly. So this is going to be a really interesting test for me. Okay, so it's finished doing the analysis. So where it's ended is actually smack bang in the middle. It's saying that it's worth checking the calibration. So that is exactly what we're going to do. And for that, we come over here to the calibration section of this system. So let's go into it and hit the start button. Okay, and we are back to analysis again. Let's see what this comes up with. Okay, so it's done some tests and now it is asking me to change the micro adjustment setting of the telephoto mode in the lens to minus 20. That's that's a big shift. So this is actually going to be really interesting. So let's do that now and then we'll see what happens. Let's go. So those of you guys who aren't fully familiar, you basically can go into the autofocus micro adjustment on the 1DX and you can change the settings. You can do it all by the same amount, which basically means then you've calibrated it for every lens the same, or you can do it by um, lens amount, which is what we're gonna do. So this is adjusting it just for this lens and you can change the wide end or the telephoto lens. And it wants me to change the telephoto end to minus 20. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so telephoto end to minus 20. This is a huge adjustment. Now we come back in to continue and see what happens. And again, it's doing more analysis and it's clicking in and out and all sorts. So let's see how this goes. Okay, so now it wants us to change it to plus 20. So let's go do that again. I won't show you, I'm just gonna go do it and then we will hit continue. Okay, that's been done. So continue, let's go. Just carrying on with the analysis here. Be interested to see what this does. Okay, so now two minus 10, so let's go again. Okay, done, let's continue. And off we go again with a bit more analysis. Well, something positive, it's saying result confidence, excellent <laughs> up here. So that's what we like, we like excellent. Okay, now change again to plus 10, there's a theme here, let's do this one. OK, 
Okay, now it wants us to change it to plus four. So let's do that. Okay, so result stabilizing. It says the result appears to be setting on a value of plus three and plus four. Would you like to finalize the test now or continue to see if the value changes with more data? Uh, choose no. Uh, well, look, we might as well get more data, right? Let's press no, see what happens. Uh, set the thing to minus 12, all right? Let's do it. So tell what we do, rather than you guys watching every tiny micro adjustment, I'm just going to play this through and then we will come back once this is finished and we will see how we get on. Okay, and we are there, we are finished. So interesting. So it's decided that the micro adjustment result that I need is plus six. And you can see here, it's given you a before and after image. Now, look, the, the after still doesn't look great. It looks a bit soft, but I'm also aware that this is a tiny piece of a piece of target on an A4 piece of paper that is 20 foot away on like at least 100% crop. So I wouldn't expect this necessarily to be pin sharp with detail. It certainly looks better than the before result. So I'm gonna press accept on here. Um, plus six, okay. Okay, so it's saying the calibration at 200 mil is done. If you haven't recently calibrated at 70 mil, it's advisable to do so, which we will. So let's give that a go. Okay, so I won't bore you with watching the entire thing, but I'm gonna go through and do the calibration again at 70 mil. So let's see how we go with that. And the results are in. So just like that, we have finished the whole process, gone through. I did the full calibration at 200 mil, and then I went through and did the full calibration at 70 mil. I did a couple of other checks as well, which I will talk to you guys about in a second. So first of all, my initial thoughts are that it is a really, really great piece of software. It's really clever. I mean, it literally takes control of your camera. You can see the settings on the screen changing as it's going through and doing the different tests. Once it's finished doing the calibration, it gives you a report. And by report, I mean like, this thing is like a thesis. It gives you so much information. You've got graphs and charts and, and, and all sorts. And I'm not gonna try and analyze all that information for this video because it would take us three hours, but it is really, really interesting. The amount of info that you get back from doing that calibration. I think the really important thing for, for us, and of course the calibration results that it gave us, are that it got me to adjust the uh, the lens. So at 70 mil, so on the wider end of this lens, it wanted me to adjust my micro adjustment by minus three. Whereas on the telephoto end, it got me to adjust it by plus six. So quite different results at 70 mil and at 200 mil. Now on that before and after chart, you can see there is a difference. Now it's a bit deceptive that chart because when it's so far away, of course, it's never gonna be 100% clear on a crop that detail. But just doing a few little test shots around my house here, I certainly feel like there's an improvement. And it's not like I was unhappy with the sharpness of the lens before, but I'm hoping now we're gonna get some really good results. And actually, I'm shooting a game tomorrow, so I'm excited to see how we get on. Now, one thing that was interesting for me is that overall, it kind of showed me that actually the autofocus on this lens is not fantastic. I was not getting good quality, sharp results at, at, at any of the adjustments. And, and I don't mean bad results, I mean not the best. So for example, also away from the video, I did some calibration on my other lenses as well. I didn't record those bits, but for example, I did a calibration on my 2470 and I was getting some really good results right up there in the green on those graph charts whereas with the 70 to 200 I didn't quite. Now that got me thinking actually I've recently managed to acquire um, a Mark II version of this lens so the 70 to 200 f 2.8 IS Mark II as I said earlier this is the Mark I. I think it's going to be really interesting to do the calibration on that lens too and see how the difference compares between the two because actually it'll be a really good measure of the quality of focus with this lens compared to that new one so that's going to be a future video keep an eye out for that one. Of course, whereas this video was primarily about the calibration, I did a couple of other tests as well. Really interesting one that I did is where it will go through for you and tell you where your lens is sharpest at different apertures. Literally goes all the way through to some test shots using the same target at all different apertures. Really interesting for me. My lens came out being sharpest at f5.6. It said it was the softest at f32, fine, 
don't really think I'm ever going to shoot at f32. What was a bit concerning for me was that it is not so sharp at f2.8, which is where I need to use this lens quite a lot. Now actually with football recently I've been testing some wider depths of field to make sure I get a few other players in focus when I'm photographing groups. So actually for the football that might be less of a worry but for my indoor sports like basketball I'm using this at f2.8 all the time. Again that's going to be really interesting when we do the comparison with the other lens to see how this performs at 2.8 versus that one. That will be really interesting to do. I also did a quick check on the sensor. The system allows you to do a dust check on your sensor. Now, <laughs> you guys are going to find me out here because basically I don't think I've ever cleaned my sensor. And oh my goodness, the results were not good. <laughs> you can see from this diagram right here. It said I have more than 300 spots of dust on my sensor. Now, 300 might sound drastic. It also gives you a percentage of coverage and it's like 0, 0.0 something something. So not the end of the world, but I think we probably have a sensor cleaning video <laughs> coming up real soon based on those results. So look, as a bit of a summary, I am really, really impressed with this Focal software. As I said, the video is not sponsored. They've not like paid me to do the review so I can give my absolute honest opinion. And I really do think it's great. I intend on going through and testing all of my other lenses with it. Now, one thing which might be a question which I'll quickly address, but, but not massively, is that obviously my other camera body, my R6, you don't calibrate that in the same way because it's a mirrorless camera. And in fact, the good news is, is that you don't need to calibrate in the same way you don't need to go through that same micro adjustment process because it is a mirrorless camera so of course I won't be doing the same test with my R6 but I will do my other lenses my 17 to 40 my 50 mil all of my other bits with this camera and also with my 7D Mark II as well if you guys are interested in this piece of software, if you want to find out more about it, I'll put all the relevant links in the description where you can go and check it out for yourself. I really, really encourage you to do so. Worth checking out. Again, not a sponsored video, my honest opinion. Before I actually got in touch with the guys over at Riken Technologies, I looked on the Focal website. There's loads of info, frequently asked questions, lots of little bits that I found useful there. So I'm sure you will too. Go check out that, get all the info that you need. Make sure you guys keep an eye on my Instagram page because I'll be posting all my sports photos from there. Maybe you might notice a difference in the sharpness with those new photos in the next few days versus the previous ones. See what you think, check those out. At Rob Sandal Sports, where you can find me, go follow me over there, comment on something, say hello, tell me you came from YouTube, it's always cool to see. If you guys enjoyed this review, if you're interested in checking out Focal at all, make sure you do me a favor, hit that like button because it helps me out loads and loads on my channel. I've said it before, I'll say it again, YouTube basically judges how good I am at making videos by how many of you guys press that like button which is why it helps me so much YouTube put quite a bit of waiting on that like button thank you for hitting it for me if you're new to my channel and you haven't subscribed think about it loads of other videos to come on my channel that you might find interesting and in the meantime guys I think that just about rounds us off thank you very much for watching and I will see you on the next video